Nostalgia is something powerful. A fond feeling from the past of childhood memories and emotions and reminding us all of the good old days. But in terms of video games, nostalgia becomes even stronger because you're not in real life anymore. You're engaged in this virtual space. And while the world around you starts to age and grow older, you can pop in an old video game cartridge and immerse yourself into the same exact virtual world you experienced as a kid. Now, developers often try and take advantage of this feeling, maybe having a similar mechanic to an older game or having a very similar visual style to a classic series. And this isn't bad or anything, but then you see developers rely on nostalgia too much and end up making a game that doesn't feel original and doesn't come up with its own new ideas and mechanics and instead feels old, bland, and sometimes even unpolished. But when a game hits that perfect balance of nostalgic and original and modern game design, it can be something really special. That special game is Shovel Knight. Now, I'm sure you've heard plenty about this game over the years. It's an insanely successful franchise, but for good reason. It was founded by Kickstarter back in 2013 and later released in 2014, but it didn't get around to playing it until a couple of years after its release. The Kickstarter was crazy successful with over 14,000 supporters and over $300,000 raised for this project, but I still didn't really know much about the game. Sometime in 2016, I saw it at a GameStop for like 20 bucks and finally decided to pick it up. And before I knew it, Shovel Knight became one of my favorite indie games of all time. I remember playing it on my way back home from some sort of trip and instantly getting hooked into its gameplay. It looks and sounds like an NES game, but buried beneath all that is a well-crafted, nostalgic, yet modern game experience. So let's stop the chit-chat and make like Shovel Knight and sharpen thy shovels because we're about to dig into this game and see what it's all about. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I can't. From start to finish, Shovel Knight is a blast from the past. Its overall design is basically one huge homage to the NES era, so it takes elements from multiple different games across the NES library and combines it all into one big nostalgic experience. So for someone like me that grew up playing these types of games, you know for a fact I was down for playing a modern NES game. The way you play on eight stages themed after eight different bosses is a reference to Mega Man. The way you traverse the world map is ripped straight out of Mario Bros. 3, and the way you pogo pounce and bounce on enemies is very similar to DuckTales. I'm pretty sure everyone and their mother knows this by now. It's pretty obvious that this game's mechanics and visuals are all based off this older generation of gaming, but it's also not afraid to show its modernism when it comes to its design. Hey, Yacht Club! The 80s called. <laughs> they want their game mechanics back. <laughs> <laughs> this part of the video is what I've cleverly titled Hey Yacht Club, the 80s called. They want their game mechanics back. <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say this game is one huge homage to the NES. Literally, almost every aspect of this game is a reference to some NES game or some NES visual design. You may have noticed the more obvious references, like the Mario Bros. 3 world map or the DuckTales Pogo Pounds, but if you dig deeper, you'll notice that there's a lot more details than just that. And yes, that pun was intended. <laughs> right when you start the game, the story is presented in a storybook style just like many other older games like Ninja Gaiden or Mega Man did back in the day. To heal yourself, you find chicken hidden in the walls, served on a freaking silver platter, just like Castlevania. Even some of the enemies behave very similar to classic foes you may have fought on the NES. The intense sword battles you had with Iron Knuckles and Zelda 2 are very identical to the battles you have with Golden Armors in every stage. Some of the mini bosses remind me of Mega Man 2 and even borrow some of the same attack patterns they had. There are so many little retro details and mechanics that this game references and the crazy thing is, we're not done. Like, not even close, like maybe 40 to 50% done. Like, I, I don't even, I don't even know. Let's just continue, I guess. 
The first thing you'll probably notice when starting the game is that there's no tutorial to teach you how to play. Instead, it teaches you through its level design. It replicates the teaching without telling formula of the NES era. For example, in the first stage you'll come across these two blocks you can't dig up normally. The blocks are telegraphed downward, so naturally you start pressing down to get past this obstacle below you, but nothing's happening. So you start trying different things, and eventually combine jumping while pressing down, and bada boom bada bam, you know how to play the game. It constantly does this throughout the entire game, but in a very natural way. The game teaches you how to play without you even realizing it because its level design is so well paced. Not only are they well designed, but they're fun, and they constantly throw new stuff at you to keep the stages fresh and interesting. There wasn't a single stage that I disliked, and with each one having a certain theme, it made them that much more memorable. The level design is on par, if not better, than most classic Capcom or Nintendo games of that era, and I think this game's level design is one of the strongest aspects Shovel Knight has to offer. Obviously, the graphics and soundtrack are all based off the 8-bit to 16-bit aesthetic. Yacht Club took advantage of modern technology and didn't limit themselves when it came to the graphics and music. The game still looks and sounds like an NES game, but isn't held back by the limitations like the NES hardware was back in the day. It's bright, colorful, polished, and sounds great. There are many graphical upgrades, including parallax scrolling, a feature you couldn't really pull off well on the NES, to give the levels more depth and pop out more. The music has more audio tracks to work with, and it sounds incredible. Overall, the game just seems more alive compared to most NES games. The game's composer actually worked on the first Mega Man, so you see that a lot of the tracks sound very similar to many classic games of that era. This game captures the sound and visual essence of the NES, while also giving it a polished, modern tint to it. Shovel Knight is faithful to the NES, but isn't held back by the limitations of MS-DOS development kits of the 80s. It's nostalgic yet modern in its visuals and gameplay, and that's why Shovel Knight is so successful. In Mark Brown's video, Shovel Knight and Nailing Nostalgia, he talks about the principles of Shovel Knight's successful nostalgic design. One of the points he mentions is Shovel Knight takes what was bad about these older games and replaces it with modern game design in every aspect of the game. Like mentioned before, old, washed-down graphics of the NES are replaced in this game by bright, colorful sprites, parallax scrolling, and beautiful particle effects. Cheap deaths and insane knockback are replaced with fair enemy placement and more air control in Shovel Knight's moveset. Limited continues and crazy difficulty spikes are replaced with saving on unlimited lives, as well as a more gradual difficulty curve. It takes the good, nostalgic elements we all remember about these games and replaces the bad, age design we forget about with modern day game design. Shovel Knight is something special. The graphics, music, game mechanics, level design all pay homage to the Nintendo Entertainment System. It manages to capture our nostalgic memories of these retro games while also making it modern in many ways. It's an incredibly well-designed game, and I can see why everyone loves it so, so much. There are many games out there that capture retro gaming nostalgia, but in my opinion, Shovel Knight does it best, and truly is an ultimate tribute to the NES. Thanks everybody for watching, I'll see you next time.